And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. Starting here on the daily, I have made an adjustment to the labeling. And once again, as I pick up on what the fluidity of the market is telling me, I am translating that into what I believe the, the uh, Elliott count is going to be. And again, I'm not changing the intensity, the levels that I expect the, this intermediate third wave to drop. I am just changing the labeling on how it is unfolding. And it is actually going back to something that I had used initially. And that was showing all the different subdivisions. But when it had gotten to be too far, I switched it and pulled that wave one down. Well, now I took the one wave one back and allowed the subdivisions to come through. More pertinent is it with the NASDAQ. So if you watch both of the updates, the NASDAQ is the one that really tossed me over to, to change it. But making the same change in the S&P, as you can see on the daily, I have minor one and two back up here at the beginning of the move where they should be, and then the first subdivision. Minute one, minute two. But instead of subdividing it yet again, I bought brought minute three down here, minute four up here. And that before that was that was uh minor was down, I think, wherever it was, and these were the minutes, and they were coming in, and it was subdividing yet again. So what I'm now suggesting is that this completed this low. Uh, last on the 4th of May, 2nd of May, excuse me, uh, completed Minute Wave 3. The rally last Wednesday was Minute 4. And we are now in Minute 5 and remain in Minute 5 as we complete the minor third. So what are my expectations? Let me go down to the, to the hourly chart and let's do a quick review there. So again, here we are, minute two, three, four. Now we're in minute five, which is nicely subdividing. So again, we have that one, two, and this lovely third coming down, and then a four, and then a five. My sub-minute wave one, sub-minute wave two, sub-minute wave three, sub-minute wave four, we're in a sub-minute wave five. Now, where do I think it can go? Well, I'm hoping, and I'm gonna put one more fib in there. And that would be for this, let's just see if I go like this, down to there, up to there. And they're not exact because I can't really see them. We're still, look at that. We It just keeps stacking up right in this 37, 51 down to 37.28 level, folks. And again, even with the arrange, you know, rearranging the exact count, the exact numbers. So it looks like this minute fifth wave will complete again. 37.51 is the fib. So you start to think, well, that's a pretty big drop. That's only 200. And we've yet to really, we've gotten close here in the S&P, but we've yet to really turn and make a crash-like move all in one day. We've gone down 150, but this is from these levels. It would be nice to see a 200 plus down drop. Now, whether we do that tomorrow, whether we do it Thursday, you know, it depends on the day, but I am kind of now looking for a much stronger fifth wave down. To, to really expand to, to likely be the longest wave out of the one, three, and the five. And now three is. And now I'm looking for five to take over and push and get us down there. So if <clears throat> I can get down there, then that's going to complete minute wave five of minor wave three. We get a minor fourth wave rally. Should be decent, very tradable. And again, now we're into... Next week, which, by the way, they're all talking about no news. No news is good news. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to be bullish. What do you think? We're going to put in a rally. This is what they're starting to talk up. It fits. We go down. 
We hit that level. We get a fourth wave rally. They're thinking we're going to go back above here. I'm thinking you're out of your mind. We could get a wave four, and that would be enough, and then a minor wave four, and then we drop in a minor five, and that minor fifth wave brings us down into these levels. The 34, 3480, 3450 that I was talking about, then we're finishing intermediate wave three. Then we do an intermediate wave four and an intermediate wave five, and we're down closer to the... March 2020 lows than people want to be comfortable with. Everyone wants to say, how we, could we possibly go down that far? I'm like, I'm not going to tell you exactly what the, what's going to drive it. More sellers and buyers, I suppose. But if there's enough out there churning, needing attention, needing to be repriced, needing to be dealt with, we're in a correction. We're in a repricing scenario. Everything needs to be repriced to fit inflation, to fit higher interest rates, to fit what we're going through. It's a lot of adjusting, including from us as the consumer as an, or anybody on a corporate level. Make your adjustments. Things are going to change for the next few years. We've got to work through all of this. There's no way around it. It's been ignored for a long time. Now it's time to pay the piper and to make the adjustments and to just so that we can continue as a healthy economy, as a, you know, uh, as many things. But we can't limp along just so that we can keep half the people happy and the other half miserable. No. There is being a dis redistribution of a lot of things. Many things are changing. Socially, there's a lot of unrest. It's been in progress for a while. And now a lot of it's coming into fruition and it needs to be dealt with. So I believe we will get down there. Then we'll do a minor four. Then we'll do a minor five. And then we'll do an intermediate four. And then we'll do an intermediate five. And then from that level, we will be putting in a solid, tradable, upside move. When exactly is that going to start? Couldn't tell you. End of May, June, maybe. We'll see. And I am going to say for tomorrow that I cannot rule out that we get this all done in one day. It would be spectacular, and it would be the trend picking back up and not trading a correction, which, if you don't know me by now, I don't like them. I don't like trading corrections. It's so much easier to trade trend because you know what to expect. Trading trading in a correction, you're like, okay, who's got what burr going in what direction? So I would prefer to see it drop back into trend, make it quick. Let's get it done. Let's do our correction. The next one, but believe it or not and then move on with this particular move. I'm going to leave it right there. Upside, yes, we need to leave open the potential and the possibility that we'll swing back up and make another attempt for 4,075, 76. It's a pretty good stretch from here, but not impossible. We did it. We tried. We tried more than once, and it failed. We have to leave open until the market breaks, unfortunately, for, until the market breaks below 39.60. Actually, sorry, take that back, 39.52. When it breaks that, then I know that it's not going to go there and we're heading down and we're heading towards that 37.97 to 37.51 to 37.36 zone. Okay. I'm going to leave it there, and our next update will be on Wednesday, May the 11th.